We are in a sense cargo on a natural flight that they're already making. So on the way out, they carry the BVT powder and on the way back, they bring the pollen. Species loss is accelerating to a rate tens or hundreds of times faster than in the past, according to a UN report on biodiversity. And extinction is looming over more than one million types of plants and animals on land and in the sea. The consequences to human life on Earth are likely to be catastrophic. Habitat loss is a key part of this picture, as is the use of certain chemicals in intensive farming, impacting soil quality and polluting rivers and seas. Organic farming has the potential to be part of the solution, but without the use of conventional pesticides, farmers face challenges to meeting growing demand. One company is seeking to address this issue with what they believe is a major agricultural innovation, starting with the humble bee. If you were to just imagine a world in which we didn't have any bees, you would have one third less food, uh, which would lead to, you know, increased prices, scarcity of fruit, you know, uh, starvation, all those things would be what we would be dealing with as a society. So they're extremely important. Ashish Malik is the CEO of BVT, or Bee Vectoring Technology, a company developing commercial farming solutions that aim to reduce or even eliminate pesticide use. We work with the common European honeybee, which folks might be familiar with. That's where they get their honey from as well. As well as with, uh, there's a couple of species of commercial bumblebees that are reared for pollination. So these are bees that a farmer will typically either purchase for their season or rent for the season. And then either the beekeeper or the manufacturer of the bumblebee hive actually places these beehives within the farmer's field. It's estimated that in the US, there are around 2.7 million bee colonies, two thirds of which travel the country pollinating crops. BVT's idea is simple, to use the natural pollination process of these bees to deliver targeted crop controls, a process they call bee vectoring. You know, we are in a sense cargo on a natural flight that they're already making. So on the way out, they carry the BVT powder and on the way back, they bring the pollen. And what happens is when they actually reach the flower, that's where kind of the magic happens for the farmer because there's a few things that happens. The bees are visiting the flower and in that process, the powder drops off their bodies and it kind of call it, we have a microorganism, a living safe microbe that's inside the powder that colonizes the plant tissue. And that's what gives the farmer the crop protection properties he's looking for. But at the same time, he's also getting the pollination benefits off the bee itself. The powder itself is a type of beneficial fungus, the exact strain of which is subject to copyright. We isolated our particular strain in the soils in Ontario, Canada, and have developed it because it has beneficial properties for the crop. Okay, so we have a formulation of a fungal strain and by fungal strain, I'm basically talking about, you know, a mushroom and it's very, at a very different level of, of detail. So we grow this fungal strain in our production labs and then we mix it with a powder that's got other inert carriers that are engineered to attach to the bees' bodies. This organic farm in Switzerland is one of the early adopters of the technology. Simon Rass has been trialling the bee vectoring system on his soft fruits. Our bees uh, bring the material um, exactly to the flowers. When you use pesticides with a sprayer, then you have um, all the material on your area, uh, on the ground, on the leaves, uh, on the flowers. So it's extremely specific to work um, of the bees and uh, perfect. The organic pesticide helps to protect against botrytis, a fuzzy grey mould you might have come across on a punnet of soft fruit. Worldwide, this pathogen is responsible for crop losses between 10 and 100 billion dollars each year. We use it only in raspberries, strawberries and blueberries. And at the moment uh, we have, for example, in the raspberries we only produce in tunnels because then we don't have such a high challenge of disease because um, we don't have rain and the humidity is, uh, is okay. 
Botrytis reproduces through huge numbers of microscopic spores that form in minute tree-like structures. The spores are produced on leaves, flowers and berries that have been attacked and killed by this mould. When mature, the spores are easily dislodged and carried on air currents where they can infect nearby flowers. Once deposited, the spores germinate and form fungal tubes called hyphae, which can invade flower parts such as stamen, pistils, sepals and petals. As the mould grows, it releases substances that cause the infected flower tissues to wither and die. Pathogens present in diseased stamens and pistils attack the lower portions of the young fruit and may later destroy the entire berry. Nutrients from the fruit support the growth and spore production. Because the infection is not immediately visible, many growers have adopted spraying chemicals throughout the season without actually knowing if they have a problem. BVT system introduces a competing fungus that stops the hyphae from producing spores and breaks the cycle of infection. Have you noticed an increase in your crop yield? The difference is between the first and the second quality. By first quality, Simon means more perfect unmarked fruit, which gains a higher price in the market and takes less time to pick and sort. So it's a win-win situation for Simon and the consumer. But how exactly does the farmer get the bee to deliver the magic powder? So this dispenser actually attaches, so over here if you can imagine is where the hive is, it attaches to the outside of the hive and through this little gap at the bottom is where the bees, as they're crawling out of the hive, they walk through our dispenser and we have a little powder that's contained inside this cartridge and uh, this, uh, this powder gets dropped in a very kind of metered way into that path. So as the bees are leaving the hive, they actually walk across this powder and they fly with the powder to the crop. So we work in, that, in this example I've shown you, we work with the commercial European honeybee hive. We've got a similar system that works with the bumblebee hive that's incorporated within the inside of the hive itself. So this is fantastic for the farmer, fantastic for the consumer as well with fewer pesticides used, but is there also a benefit to the bees? Because numbers have been declining for many years now, haven't they? Yeah, colony collapse. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, not directly, but indirectly, yes, because you just kind of hit the nail on the head. There's many different factors that are contributing to colony collapse and decline in bee populations. And probably the most prevalent is the overuse of chemical pesticides. So there's a direct correlation with some insecticides that are used to the health of bee populations. But there's also now increasing evidence that even chemical fungicides have an effect on the colony's health and other products that are used in general. So we've actually got a very elegant way that the bees can help themselves. By applying a bee safe biological product to the crop, the farmer doesn't need to spray as many chemicals, right? So as they reduce the amount of chemicals that they're spending, it'll come back and benefit the health of the bee population as well. Is there any data on that? Have you been able to collect anything? Every time that we're doing a trial to measure the beneficial effects to the crop. We're also asking the bee keeper to collect bee health data. So they actually look at colony strength. You know, how are the frames developing, right? You know, what's the development of the larva? How much of the frame is actually covered by larva? And so we are tracking that data. We probably need to do that for another couple, three seasons, just to get enough data to be able to draw some conclusions from. But the early indications are that we're not hurting the hives because that's the first thing that we have to make sure of. But we're beginning to see some benefits that we could also uh, you know, attribute to the overall system in terms of improved colony strength. While BVT technology is well placed to work with organic farmers such as Simon, they are also partnering with large non-organic growers in several states in the US. So this technology has huge industry-wide implications. If commercial farmers can protect their crop in a way which supports biodiversity in the environment, then it's a good outcome for our farmers, our bees and the future. Ah, oh, it's all finished. I know you want more Razor stories, so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you soon.